Hi everyone, it's Sarah. I'm back. Yay! I don't have just a ton to share with you. I did complete my Magical Stitches homework last week. I did the minimum stitch count needed to get rewarded for Cinderella's Castle and Magical Stitches. And I started an extra credit. I didn't finish it, but I will share my progress on that. And then like I talked about on my Friday video, I do have... Um, some of the images you can see for some of my 2020 plan starts. So I will go over that again, as well as a couple of other goals that I have set for myself since Friday, because that's what I like to do. So let's start with, I do have notes. Let's start with our whips. Uh, my first one I'm going to share with you, I did for two homework assignments, and I'm already out of focus, wow. Um, I did for two homework, uh, two homework, challenges for magical stitches uh, the piece is happy halloween this is from the 2015 halloween just cross stitch and it is by the designs by brianne jackson and i used it for the black um stitch at uh, the mc310 so let me focus in so as you can tell there's quite a bit of black there um so i did it for that and then i also did it for the animatronics where they said that you could just do an animal that dresses like a human and this is a series of three owls dressed in halloween costumes so how fun is that so yeah i got two homework out of that have a new start sorry about that have a new start that i did for um penalty stitches for my other two I'm almost finished with it. I cannot share it because it is for someone, and I don't know if they watch this or not, so um, I'm just going to not actually share any pictures. If you are in Magical Stitches, you can go to the Boardwalk Resort homework stuff and see what I'm working on, uh, at least a little bit. I don't know how apparent that even is, but yeah, I... Um, can't really share that unfortunately hopefully next week i will have it ready to um share with y'all have it completed but i have to wait for it. it's completed till i can share it with you uh then so yeah i did i did 500 stitches on that total so that i um i could just do the penalty stitches and didn't have to worry about it because i wanted to get it done um started and done hopefully i was hoping that in a week but it didn't happen um for the Cinderella's Castle Challenge, um, I worked on Sunset Horse, and this we had to do at least a thousand stitches to get credit towards Cinderella's Castle, um, and this is where it is now. Oh. So I got the entire face done, and now I'm starting to work on the neck and the mane, and that's really all there is to it. So. Um, another couple of sessions like that, and I should have a finish on that. So that would be exciting. Um, and then the e extra credit that I started to work on was um, the it was stitch the four elements, and it's four elements as um, according to the book. I'm not reading the books, so I can't really speak to how these challenges tie in with the books, but it was... Sun, clouds, stone, or, I already can't remember the last one, but I, I did clouds. Um, I'm working on King Valiant's Castle by Clouds Factory. And you can see there's a series of clouds there. And this is the progress I made on this. I did just shy of 200 stitches on it last week, last night. So I still have, um... And I did not think to grab here. Let me see if I can just use this back of this. Um, I did not. I, I did about 200 just under. So I've done a little over 100 to be able to finish that for, for the extra credit challenge. And then I'm also going to use it for the extra credit. I'm having to do a small world. It's a small world rod because it's in the castle courtyard. So there's a castle here. So I thought I would do that. I haven't figured out my other two extra credit, but we have till the end of the month. So I have time to work on that. So that's the whips I have to show you. Um, I've been kind of tracking um, using the Crooks and Stitches planner, 24 hours across stitch planner. And 
um, last week I did a total of 1,823 stitches over five days. Uh, there were two days I didn't stitch at all. Um, so I'm looking at those numbers and I'm going to push myself to another challenge, which is I would like to try to do 100,000 stitches in the year 2020, which would be a real big push for me. I know for, for a lot of people that's not that's not even pushing themselves at all. But for me, that's a real big push. So um, that's a new new get challenge that I've got. We'll see how, how well I keep up with my stitches. But so far, it's going good. I've kept up with them since the beginning of the year, which I know is only 11, no, 13 days. But um, yeah, I, I we'll see. We'll see how that goes. Now, um, the thing I talked about on Friday, let me move some of this stuff out of the way, was planned new starts for 2020 and that was on the 20th of each month I am going to do a planned new start uh, the only way I will start a project that is more than 100 by 100 is if I do it on one of these 20th of the months I have a few of them planned out and after I started thinking about what I wanted to do and all of that I decided that this will not be a start this is one of the Christmas presents and I said that I will start it on one of those dates it will not be a start on the 20th it's not 100 by 100 so I'd rather just get started on it and get it finished and get an earlier start or start on my other two Christmas projects so um welcome please leave by nine by Ben Yana stand um yeah this one's gonna be real quick so this one hopefully we'll see a, a new start by the if not the end of this month, by the beginning of February. So there's that. I don't know. I have to figure out if I have fabric for it or if I have to go buy fabric. But I'm just going to do it on 14 count Ada. So it shouldn't be too too hard to get a, get a start on that. Um, for February and April, I'm skip, skipping March for right now. But for February and April, I'm going to do one of my... Um, Christmas projects I haven't it's going to depend on fabric because I've got specific fabrics I want for both of these and I don't know just having the hardest time with the autofocus um, the first one is you can certainly cr certainly try by veil stitchery yeah um, this one is for my brother and it's all one color so hopefully it, it stitches up pretty quick um, and then the other one I went to go print out the cover pages for the things I didn't have cover pages for. And my printer, I guess, I didn't I didn't realize, but it is out of ink. I just printed the other day, and I don't remember seeing any sort of warning. But um, I will. The other one is Not Fury Dragon by, oh, goodness, All Perfect Patterns, something along those lines. I will link it down below, too. I will link anything that I can that I'm showing today that's from Etsy or where there's, like, a online link easy to find. I will. I will link it, but yeah, I'm hopefully showing it right now here, um, and that is, like I said, not Fury Dragon, and so one of those will start in February, the other will start in April. My March start, because it happens to fall on my daughter's birthday, March 20th, I will be starting um, the possibilities of Evolutions Rainbow, um, maximum colors, it's just the regular size, not super size, but it is max colors, um, I will be starting that on the 20th at least that's my plan um again i couldn't print off the cover page so um i have a picture of what the the artwork looks like here uh, i'm excited to start this for her it's going to be uh it's it's it'll be my largest piece um that i'll have on the go and that will make my fifth big full coverage so until i finish one of those i'm not going to start a new one i'm just i need to not have 20 of those going at once five is enough probably five is too many but I do like having that selection there too just like everywhere else um in my stitching um I am going to in May start a Christmas project I have the fabric for this so I think this is what I'm going to do it's um Santa Sky Scene um by Emma Congdon it is from I did not think to write this down it is from Across Stitch Crazy I want to say um, and I want to say it's an older one, like 2016, but I will, I will make that note down below too. And I will have that, um, picture here. Um, I'm excited about that one. I think it's really pretty. So that will be my May, during Mania, I'm not doing an ornament on the 20th. I will do a, I will do a larger project. So I'm going to give that a try and see how that goes. Um, don't have a plan for June yet. For July because it's my husband's birthday month his birthday is actually earlier in the month but um, 
I, I mentioned this a few years ago, quite a few years ago. I gave this to him as a Christmas present that, you know, with a promise to stitch it. And I haven't started it because I kind of just stopped stitching right after that. Um, it is Wee Little Stitches, um, Monty Python, and the Holy Grail. He does want one change um, in between um, the, I think this is Lancelot, and this is definitely the, the Black Knight. He wants there to be an empty space because in the credits there is a Sir not appearing in this film or something like that. So he's wanting to recognize that by putting an empty space there. So I will count the stitches for one of the knights and, and put that in there. Um, I don't think that's Lancelot. I don't know who that is. I am not as familiar with this. But anyway, in this space. I know it is right before the, the Black Knight. So I will get that done. Um, I may have to double check that I have the right spacing there. But that's that's going to be my July start. And then for August, which is my birthday month, I will be starting the Fortunate Traveler. Sorry, this has got a little bit of a sheen to it. Uh, Fortunate Traveler by Teresa Winsler. This is out of print, um, as are all of her dragon patterns, unfortunately. But this is what I was talking about when I was talking about Stretch the Magic Dragon. This is basically the same dragon. I've decided I'm going to go ahead and do Stretch because even if I don't keep him for myself, he will make an awesome present for somebody in my family. So I am going to go ahead and do it. I do like that they're two different colorways because, as you can tell, this is, this is more cool colors where Stretch is. Um, oranges and reds and yellows, warm colors. So... I'm excited about starting this. This will give me um, a lot of time to plan and kit it up because I don't have any of the anything for this. Um, I will also have to get fabric for a lot of these, but that gives me time uh, and I'll get to plan it out. So that is my my planned start so far. Don't have anything for September through December. Like I said, there will probably be a Halloween piece that will start, a larger Halloween piece that will start in there. And then I'll have some small, small starts such as like the the welcome please leave by nine throughout the year i'm not really limiting my starts on those other than i don't i'm probably gonna only have one or two um smaller ones on the go at a time uh just so i don't have i have a limited amount of em envelopes and that's what my limit to how many projects i can have on the go at a time will be because otherwise i will start all the things and not finish any of the things and i really would like to do some finishes so yeah that's that um oh the i didn't think to mention this that um Evie Lu Lucian's rainbow piece um it is a Hade heaven and earth designs and it is based on artwork by walking on sorry I keep looking down I have I have notes here because without them I mess up um I really think that's all I have um I mean I've talked to y'all on on Friday and then I didn't have a whole lot of whips to show so it's not not super surprising I guess but that's that's all I have to share with you today so this is gonna be a super quick video I do I do have a game to share um, and this one this one is a small quick mostly card game called no thanks uh, this is an older version of it um, I believe it is Mayday now that is printing it and it's got like a blue box and the much brighter colors so this is this is one we've had in our collection for a few years and the way this game works is you start with a pile of cards ranging from one to 30 if it goes all the way to 40 or if it stops at 30 i think it stops at 34 35 35 is the biggest one i see in here so um and the way it works is that these will be shuffled up. You will take randomly, I think you take like nine cards out. So you don't have a perfect knowledge of what's in what's in the deck. You can make a more strategic um, game of it. And there's there's instructions on how to do that. But you, you take, I believe it's nine cards out. So you don't have perfect knowledge of what cards are in the deck. And then you will reveal the first card. Um... You're, the idea is you want to score the least amount of points um, of anybody playing. And the way you do this is you start with, everybody starts with an even amount of these little um, chips. And it's pretty simple play. Card comes up. You either take the card, which in this case is a 25, or you 
pass by putting one of your chips on it. Chips at the end of the game count as negative points, but it also counts as a way to not take cards during the game. So, as I said, you're trying to get the lowest, the lowest score, so, um, your chips can be pretty valuable, but also you don't necessarily want to take a high card. Um, so 25, that is that is towards the high end, so it might get passed a few times. At some point, you'll be like, you know what? It's worth me taking those chips in order to put this high card into my, into my hand so that I have bargaining power later on. Um, the other thing is that if, say, you ended up with the 25, but you also had the 23 and a 24 because it is in consecutive... Um, order, it only counts for the lowest number in that run. So it would only be 23 points, not 23, 24 plus 25. So uh, you want to try to get numbers that are in a row. But like I said, some of the cards are removed. So there's no perfect knowledge. Um, once the last card is taken, everybody counts up the points in their hand, not including those higher cards in consecutive order, and takes away, um, subtracts the chips that they have and then the person with the lowest score wins so pretty simple easy game to get into it's a ton of fun i enjoy it um and and like i said the, the box is a little bit different now it's blue um with some bright colored cards like I, I, I don't know we've had this game since like 2014 and i think it was just as they were they were changing the print to the to the new the new um, publishing company so no thanks i will link the board game geek link to that as always so you can learn more about it if you are interested in that and i will be back next monday um hopefully with some more stitching to show you i hope you all have a great day and a great rest of the week i'll talk to you later bye